peaked. I call this one soap opera love. Peaked the morning she moved out. I gave her back the photographs. Let this thing of ours become a distant memory. A top-notch beauty. She's sensuous, smart, thrifty, and disciplined in her work habits. But she does not keep her word. After our first year at a call to voicemail, she poured out her suffering heart and confessed that her boyfriend, he had physically abused her. It was during the course of their long-time affair. I remember Princess Diane explained that a third had spoiled her chance for a happy marriage with us, his specter, a constant presence. I will not forget, she cowered, ready to walk out the door, childlike, fearful, shoulders slumped forward, eyes to the ground. She replayed, I guess, previous experience. I did not raise my voice. Was that not revelation enough? She admitted shortly thereafter to eating disorder, a form of anorexia, she called it. So, at the root of our affair lay poor self-image, explaining both her being with me a man twice her age, and that other five-year romance with a beast, a criminal, whose coercive words and deeds proved his love was true. Later this week, from a spot above the head of our bed, I'll, I'll take down her grandfather's painting, a birthday gift from her to me, icon-like. It portrays the infant Jesus, who is held in his mother Mary's arms. I'll return it with the Lord's Prayer, a hand-colored photocopy translated into Swedish Gothic script. We have attacked on the wall. It occupies a space directly next to the refrigerator. Does, does, does she believe in God? I ask myself. It's early morning and I'm tired. Yeah, but, but I would like to know. She's sick. She doesn't know what she believes. I have a big blank spot in my schedule. I feel bad all the time. I don't know what to do. Uh, what am I without her, I wonder? Can't I, I? I mean, is there any way I could make her better? I feel like shit. I want to get up from the keyboard and go into the kitchen and weep. I may never speak to her again. I'd love to sleep with her. Hoped she would stand next to me, become a loving companion, a wife. Instead, I got her boasts. Sadly, Pyrrhic confidences about her intimate, intimate, imminent victory, she vanquishes the ghost of her former lover. One day, she came to me at work, asked me to step outside and whispered how at 4 a.m. that same morning in our bed, in our home, she recognized her failure, the fact that she could not give her to, herself to sex, would ultimately mean his deviltry triumphed. In reality, she had lost the fight. The beast was ascendant. He stood beside our bed. But now a fool is talking. I'm the one, screw loose, who hoped we might write love songs, which themselves become legend, who wish the kind of love, no restriction, limbs askew, monkey love. She and I, bound up in root, passion limitless, a universe, a thrilling heaven, like some Islamic vision whose paradise has eternal physical bliss. By God, give it over to this physical ecstasy, that happiness and children be our bounty, that we might enjoy peace, and our love attains power of example. It brings to no sure light for the ages. No intimacy resisted. She lives, she lives in drama, where a terrible wound reopens, Finale's dojos in the tavern on 18th Street. Each is seen time, time, and time again. She enjoys the nightmare theatrics. She eschews healthy flesh. The pain of the past captivates her soul. I am afraid. The demon drives her. And now, when all is said and done, he alone is her dream lover.